the science that looks into the aspects of waiting and managing lines in all sorts of venues from the airport to amusement parks and from restaurants to the hospital is called queuing theory. The queuing theory is the science and math behind queues and waiting in line. This presentation will discuss the theories of queuing, real life applications, implications for business, and applying queuing concepts. Here are some examples of how the four principles of the queuing theory, first in, first out, last in, first out, processor sharing, and priority are applied to the many aspects of everyday life. Let's begin with the visit to the bank. When you arrive, you will notice only one line, but multiple tellers are available. The person who arrived first is next. By having multiple tellers available, managers ensure that one slow transaction does not hold up the entire line. This scenario describes first in, first out. When entering an elevator, you will notice that it is always the last person who enters that is the first to exit. It will take longer for everyone to exit if the first who entered are the first to leave. This is an example of last in, first out. When visiting the grocery store, you may notice there is only one cashier available but six customers waiting. A second register will open if more than two or three customers are waiting in line. Also, some stores will implement roaming clerks, who will ring up all items and provide a customer with the receipt that can be taken to the cashier for scanning, which makes it faster to complete the transaction. This scenario describes the processor sharing discipline. At times, prioritizing maintenance work in an apartment community is crucial. If one customer calls about their light bulb going out and another calls after about their air conditioner not working, the priority will be given to the customer with the air conditioner. This is an example of the priority discipline, which serves customers with the highest priority first. The queuing theory has many everyday uses that are put in place by businesses. For instance, to ensure adequate water pressure, cities use the theory to ensure there are enough water towers to handle the demand at peak times. In manufacturing, queuing is a necessary element of flexible systems. Boeing, for example, experiences fluctuating demand for its products throughout the year, so factors of production have to be continually adjusted to handle the varying demand for manufacturing as needed. Many of us have also been to McDonald's and seen the queuing theory in practice. McDonald's uses a single-line queue in which patrons stand to place an order at the next available cashier. MM1 queuing system is a good approximation for a large number of customers in a single line. This system has been applied to many fast food providers and banks where customers are waiting in the queuing line for services. The frustration of getting in a slow line is reduced because one slow transaction does not affect the throughput of the remaining customers. As a result, customer satisfaction is increased. This system can be used for estimating time as well. Call centers often indicate how long a customer will need to wait before speaking with a representative. People can often wait longer without getting frustrated when they know their waiting period. Little's theorem is another helpful tool for estimating operations. For example, managers at a warehouse can use it to determine how many resources are needed to achieve a certain goal. By using this, the managers are able to analyze where the bottlenecks of the systems are and how to increase efficiencies, reduce time traps, and eliminate waste in order to increase or decrease material flow. We all have deadlines to meet and objectives to achieve in our daily lives. However, if businesses and others did not use the queuing theory, meeting these would be more difficult. The queuing theory can be very mathematical and provide businesses with information to make them more efficient. The queuing theory examines many components of a business process to determine the best method to better the process. We hope we have provided a non-technical understanding of the queuing theory and that you can easily see the theory not only helps manage many of our daily life choices, but how businesses can use the theory to provide a better product and service.